From Wall Street to the Kremlin, the financial markets are trembling and governments are rethinking their strategies. The question on everyone's mind, how did China manage to defy the odds and reshape the global balance of power? Today, we will witness the unraveling of a game-changing move that has the world talking as China sweeps in to free Russia from the chains of Western sanctions, sending shock waves through the world. But this is not just a story of diplomacy, it's a tale of strategy, calculating, and a power play of epic proportions. As we embark on this journey, prepare to witness the unveiling of a geopolitical masterpiece, a move that has redefined the rules of the game. Before we dive headfirst into this world-changing story, don't forget to show your support for Tech Revolution by hitting that like button and subscribing to our channel. With that said, let's now get started. In Russia, a surprising sight can be noticed. A large number of shipping containers from China are being left unused. Why are they there? The reason is simple. Trade between Russia and China has grown a lot. Recently, there has been a huge rise in the amount of goods Russia got from China. This change caught the attention of a company named Container Exchange. When the company looked into the situation, an interesting discovery was made. Russia has around 150,000 containers more than it needs. What's the next step? People in Russia are trying to figure that out. The idea is to send these extra containers back to where they came from China. But it's not as straightforward as it seems. The main issue is that while Russia is getting a lot of items from China, it isn't sending back nearly as many goods in return. Because of this, a large number of containers remain unused in Russia, just waiting. Christian Roloffs, the person in charge of container exchange, gave more insight into this situation. According to him, these unused containers are abundant in Russia. And when there's an excess of something, its value often goes down. This is what happened with containers. Their prices in Russia have gone down significantly because they aren't being used. So what caused this situation? When examining the trade between Russia and China, it's important to consider the backdrop of the situation in Ukraine. The situation has been a pivot point, reshaping many global trade connections and influencing the shipping container dynamics between Russia and China. In response to Russia's involvement in Ukraine, several Western countries, spearheaded by the US, decided to implement sanctions on Russia. Sanctions are like economic restrictions. They can involve not selling certain goods to a country, limiting purchases from them, or even curbing financial transactions. These restrictions weighed heavily on Russia's economic landscape. Many Western business re-evaluated their presence in Russia, with some reducing their operations or exiting entirely. This created a space in the market that needed to be filled. China, recognizing the opportunity, stepped up. The reduced trade engagement with the West made Russia look elsewhere, notably towards the East. This shift is part of the reason there's a surge of Chinese containers in Russia. In essence, the situation in Ukraine became a significant factor in redirecting Russia's trade focus. It's a testament to how geopolitical events can ripple through and shape globe trade dynamics. The current scenario with the shipping containers is a tangible reflection of these broader changes. When talking about the global situation, China spoke loud and clear. They didn't want to pick any team. They mainly hoped everything would settle down peacefully. Moreover, China felt the way Western countries reacted to Russia, kinda like telling them off, wasn't the best move. Diving into their business dealings, imagine China has this massive energy-hungry machine. This is like the main supplier, filling it up by selling lots of energy to them. But there's more to the story. China, in turn, sends over tons of stuff we see and use every day to Russia. Think of gadgets, clothes, and even toys. It's almost like a kid trading his toys for some candy. This trading has made them bond like best pals, not just simple next-door neighbors. To make things clearer, let's dive into some big numbers. 
Between the chilly months of January and the warm days of August in 2023, they exchanged goods worth a jaw-dropping $155 billion. That's like a mountain of money. Breaking that number down a bit, China packed and shipped items to Russia that totaled about $71.8 billion. This is so much bigger than before. Imagine adding 63.2% more to an overflowing inventory than the last time they counted. But wait, China didn't just play the role of seller. They were big-time shoppers too, picking up goods worth $83.3 billion from Russia's store. And guess what? There's an exciting twist. Russia, with their fingers crossed, is feeling super optimistic. They have this strong hunch that if this business party keeps rocking, by the time they're singing New Year songs, their trade tally with China could skyrocket to a mind-blowing $200 billion. And even the leaders of these countries, Mr. Putin from Russia and Mr. Xi Jinping from China were left wide-eyed, not expecting these sky-high trade numbers when they first put their business hats on. There's something to note here. When China buys certain items from Russia, like raw materials, they aren't shipped in those big containers. Instead, those goods even travel by train. It's a different story though, when China sends goods to Russia. China sends over products like cars and gadgets. And when many international companies decided not to work with Russia after its actions in Ukraine, China saw an opportunity. They began sending more goods to Russia. Now about oil, China has been buying a significant amount from Russia. To give an idea, in July, if China bought five barrels of oil, one of them came from Russia. That's not all. During that same month, out of all the oil Russia sold, 80% of it was bought by only two countries, China and India. But let's get back to those extra shipping containers in Russia. Their presence isn't only because of the items being traded. There are more challenges involved. Russia's ports and roads are packed. This means goods move slower than they should. Efforts have been made to fix this, but hurdles remain. One big challenge is money, getting enough of it and deciding how to spend it efficiently. Container Exchange, the company that noticed the container surplus, stated something important. If Russia wants to trade more with countries in Asia, their ports, roads, and other facilities need to be way better than they are now. As we reflect on the evolving trade relationship between Russia and China, it's worth pondering its trajectory in the coming years. Russia and China are trading a lot right now. Some events like the issues in Ukraine have made Russia and the West not getting along well in trade. So Russia is now trading more with China. But what will happen next between Russia and China? Right now, Russia and China are helping each other in trade. Russia has many natural things that China needs. And China makes many items that Russia wants to buy. This makes their business strong. But only doing business with one country can be tricky. It's like only having one friend. If you fight with that friend, you'll be alone. So in the future, Russia and China might want to trade with other countries too. The world has changed a lot. New leaders come and big events happen. These can change how countries feel about each other. Maybe Russia will want to trade with the West again. Or China might want to work with other countries more. The condition of Russia's roads and ports is one of these bumps. They're not in the best shape. This makes it hard to move goods quickly and easily. The kind of items they're exchanging also adds to the issue. Some items need these containers, while others don't. This mismatch is why so many containers from China are left waiting in Russia, not being used. In short, Russia and China are closing business now. But the future is always full of surprises. We'll have to wait and see what happens next in their trading story. And there you have it. As the global chessboard shifts, China's latest move has certainly taken the West by surprise. Russia's growing closeness with China is reshaping the trade landscape and challenges the balance of power. It's a testament to how dynamic and ever-evolving global politics and trade can be. But what do you think? 
How will this move affect global tech industries? Could this reshaping lead to innovations or collaborations? And how might the West respond in the tech realms? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you found this video insightful, please hit the like button. And for more content like this, make sure to subscribe to Tech Revolution. Thank you for watching and see you in our next videos.